The weird thing about learning the types of triangles is just flat out how many there are. You know, when you're a kid, you learn what a triangle is, and then you pretty much move on to the next topic. Triangle has three sides, done. But actually, based on information about the sides and the angles, um, there, there's, there are different names and classifications for them. And so those are the two broad categories of information. You can learn about triangles from information about their sides. That's one category. And uh, the other category is you can learn about triangles based on information given about their angles. So we'll look at triangles um, defined by their sides and triangles defined by their angles. And there are there's a bunch. So when you're, when you're only focused on the angles of a triangle, this would be the breakdown of the different types of triangles based on their angles. And so these are them. So what's interesting too about this whole topic is that is you really can't eyeball things in geometry or math. They have to tell you specifically. So doing kind of left to right, this this first type of triangle based on the angle is a right triangle. That's actually not true as this is given. You have to actually know that this has one right angle and they have to mark it given this little box. So if a triangle is one right angle, then it is a right triangle. As far as the acute triangle, every single angle has to be acute. And if you remember what that is, that means the angle has to be less than 90 degrees. All of them, not just one of them. So uh, this has one acute angle. Why isn't that an acute triangle? Because by definition, an acute triangle has to have all three angles that are less than 90 degrees. And you can totally see that these are all smaller than 90 degrees. Equiangular is another type of triangle, and that is, again, kind of like the right triangle. These angles all look the same. So an equiangular triangle has three angles that are totally the same. But again, we can't take that for granted, so they, have to ha they actually have to have markings like this. This is how you designate that angles are congruent. If they have one little curved bar, then they totally match, and you would know, yes, these are congruent. They could also, as long as they match, that's all that matter. They could also have two, right? Here's... 2, 2, 2, we know that all of the ones with two markings match, so 1, 2, 3 angles are all the same, so this is equiangular. And then this last one is obtuse, and the thing about the obtuse ones is, is that's similar um, to acute, except rather than having all three obtuse angles greater than 90 uh, to form the triangle, that's actually impossible. If all of these were obtuse, the, the triangle would never come together. So the definition for an obtuse triangle, not like acute, is that only one angle has to be obtuse. And you can see here that this angle is greater than 90, and so this is uh, an obtuse triangle. Sure, these angles are acute. Why isn't this not an acute triangle? Because all three have to be acute to be an acute triangle. Only one has to be obtuse for this to be an obtuse triangle. So that's how you designate triangles based on their angle information. So what about their side information? Okay, so these are the three types of triangles based on just their side information alone. And the first one, equilateral, here's isosceles, scalene. Again, these, these are not true as drawn. So this says equilateral, which sounds kind of common sense. Equal means same lateral. Okay, so all three sides are the same length. And looking at it, hey, I think I can kind of tell that they're same length. That's not how it works in geometry. You need flat out actual markings to determine if these are the same or if they wrote, you know, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. But the way to mark it is this. If you have matching tick marks like so, one here and here, all you care about is the size, excuse me, the um, number of tick marks to match. So one, one, and one, they match. Well, I could do the same thing and have two, two, and two. As long as they have the same number of tick marks and they match, then I can see here that all three sides are definitely the same. So this is an equilateral triangle. Isosceles is a weird word. An isosceles triangle is when two sides are congruent and not the third. So here's my markings again to show that these two are the same based on these little tick marks and this one is must not be. So isosceles has two sides that are the same. Scalene triangles, they actually are triangles in which no sides are the same. So, and, and again, you know, this has no markings and we can also just tell they're not the same length. So you have to be careful, you know, everything is scalene, a triangle, unless you're told otherwise. If these didn't have tick marks, you could not make any assumptions about which sides are congruent. So I'd say every triangle is basically congruent. Uh, I mean, excuse me, every triangle is basically scalene unless you hear otherwise. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting is that we kind of talked about breaking down triangles by angle type and by then separately by side type, but there's a little bit of overlap. 
So when you look at this equilateral triangle and you know that all three sides are congruent because you can see that they're marked so, one thing that you can also know immediately or assume once you learn what equilateral triangles are and what they imply is that actually if the sides are the same, then the angles must also be the same. So you have three congruent angles if you have an equilateral triangle. And even more importantly, right, we can say that we don't know what these are. So well, let's call them X. We don't know their value. We don't know how many degrees they are. Are they 20 degrees, 100 degrees? How many degrees are there? Um, we can assume they're X, right? So wouldn't you agree that there's one, two, three X angles? If we each one was X and we added them up, that would be three X. And every triangle adds to 180 degrees, right? So doing a little bit of algebra, divide by three, divide by three, we can tell that actually we know every angle of any equilateral triangle in the world, I don't care how tall it is, how small it is, how big it is, if it is equilateral like so, then the angles are the same. And not only that, they absolutely, in every case, come out to equal 60. So that's a no-brainer. So if someone hands you an equilateral triangle, 60, 60, 60, every single time. Um, now, isosceles are a little different, but there is something you can assume about them as well. Anytime you have an isosceles triangle and these two sides are congruent, the base angles they're called are also congruent. So let's mark them with a double here. So yes, if these are congruent, the angles that form them, the base angles they're called, are also congruent. And, you know, as far as an assumption about scalene, you can say this. If no sides are the same, I also know that no angles are the same. So two sides the same, two angles the side. Two angles the same, excuse me. Three sides the same, three angles the same. No sides the same, no angles the same. So that's some assumptions you can make once you do know stuff about those triangles. And that's it. That's how you break down triangles by either angle information or side information. And now you can name them and classify them and you'll get professional at that. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that video.